Hi there, and welcome to the Homestead Education Podcast. Do you have a homestead, farm, or just dream of a rural life? This is a show to help you and your kids grow your own food and grow as a person. I'm your host, Cody Hanner. I'm a homesteader, homeschool mama six, and small town enthusiast. I was raised by an old school rancher and blessed by the grace of God to have been exposed to so much of what rural life has to offer. Join me every week to talk about homesteading, homeschooling, and growth with a homestead education. Everybody, I am so excited to have you back here this week. We have a great guest coming on, but first I just want to give you a little bit of a little bit with what's been going on here at the Homestead Education. Last week released all of your favorite Homestead Education stories in book form or as a box set. If you order the box set right now, you can get the all the audio versions for free. I will link that in the show notes. These make really great uh, stocking stuffers or just gifts under the tree. They're beautiful, wholesome, traditional homestead stories that teach character for young children. Speaking of gift giving, um, I don't know if you guys caught my podcast two weeks ago about homestead gift giving and the homestead 12 days of gift giving. Have I said gift giving enough? Anyways, <laughs> so go ahead and the links in the show notes to that. You'll get 12 emails with all of my favorite homestead gifts for all the men, women, ch- teens, and kids in your life. Today, we are going to have Greg and Marianne Russell from Rockbridge Farmstead on our podcast. And they couldn't have picked a better time to come on because we're going to be talking about niche marketing and supporting small businesses when gift giving this holiday season and beyond. All right, guys, I have Greg and Marianne Russell from Rockbridge Farmstead here today. They are homesteaders on just under three acres in Kentucky. They have a farm business where they make the most amazing uh, real beeswax products. And they do everything with their kids right there on the farm and have a podcast where they talk to other homesteaders about how they run their farm. So hi, guys. Hi. Hi, how are you? Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on this evening. Oh, thanks for having us. We're really excited. So I actually got to meet Greg and Marianne at the Homesteaders of America. We'd been following each other on social media for a while and we get to the conference and turns out we're right next to each other. So we were we were neighbors. <laughs> we got to be buddies really fast because, you know, our typical terrace branch ate everybody's snacks. <laughs> so <laughs> we were happy to share. It was fun. <laughs> so go ahead and tell me a little bit about yourselves. Or tell my <laughs> listeners, because I know a little bit about you guys. <laughs> Yeah. So we, like you said, we live in Kentucky um, and we have about three acres, um, which we kind of have a little bit of everything. We've had a variety of different things that we figured out weren't for us. Animals. Animals. Yeah. Like the kids took it really hard when you decided parenting wasn't for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We decided they could stay. Um, yeah. So we, as you mentioned, we, bees are kind of like our main focus and then all of the other things are sort of as far as business goes and then um all the other animals are mostly just for our own consumption or you know sustainability for our own family um but the bees are really i guess are the passion behind yeah. what we do and so you and can they're relatively well i mean we've had bees for this full this summer will be our fourth year i believe and so we've had them for a while. We moved to this property in 2014 mm-hmm. with no no expectations to do what we're doing now. So we wanted out of the city, but we didn't really plan on jumping into animals and self-sufficiency yeah. and all this kind it of sort stuff. Of rolled into that slowly as we we decided we really liked this lifestyle and and we've always been kind of I guess you health conscious or like you know, aware of what we're eating and <laughs> she can say health conscious. We, st- <laughs> we actually started this because I was just being really lazy because we have three acres and I was oh. mowing 
all of it. So like I was mowing for like four hours a week and I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. And everyone's like, get goats, get goats. So, we so did. that's what I did is I got goats to let them kind of help. Uh, so I didn't have to mow as much and it kind of took off from there. So we've had goats, uh, chickens, we have meat rabbits, meat birds, laying hens, ducks, ducks, geese, geese pigs, we have sheep, goats, Our livestock and, uh, said goats. and yeah. thousands and thousands of bees. <laughs> yeah, we ha- we run about 30 colonies of bees right now. So do you tag them so you know like who's in and who's out? Like all 30,000 of them (laughs) man that would be quite a job and they only live for about 30 days so you'd have to be doing it once a month oh wow i knew they had a short lifespan i didn't realize it was only 30 days well yeah Yeah. during like the the summer except for the queen she can live up to about six to eight years oh wow yeah on average it's like three or four years but she can live for longer all right we all learned something we're good to go now (laughs) yeah Um, yeah, I love how you, you know, everybody, I was talking to someone the other day about everybody has this catalyst that takes them to that self-sufficiency and, you know, I love yours. Like, oh, we just decided we need someone else to mow for us. Yeah, Mine was actually, my original website was homemade revelation. Cause I realized I wasn't cooking homemade, even though I thought I was mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you know, we were big hunters. We always grew our own meat and had this, you know, really nice fried venison steak with macaroni and cheese with it you know and I'm yeah like, wow this this isn't what I thought it was like I'm so happy for this homestead movement that everybody's on right now yeah, yeah. absolutely I, hope it, I really hope it sticks because we need to go back a generation or three I totally agree yeah. and I was thinking about that the other day like if everybody all these people who are interested stick with it because I know that that's really hard you get into it a few years and then you're like oh I don't know if this is for me or not or you go through enough difficulties at that point that you may not end up sticking with it but you know our grandparents or our great-grandparents things were just so much better as far as the world and the way things were and the environment and all of those different aspects um that if we could get back to that that would be really great. Well, <laughs> I mean, were... with all the convenience foods, people have too much time on their hands to come up with really dumb stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like how, because so they're homeschoolers and homesteaders, like a lot of us. And so tell me a little bit about like how you integrate the homeschool into your homestead. Yeah. So, I mean, we do, I guess, formal, formal lessons. It's very informal. (laughs) Um, I think we fall into like the unschooling slash Charlotte Mason category of homeschooling a lot of the time. So I haven't really covered Charlotte Mason on here yet. Do you you have like a quick? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So Charlotte Mason um, was in England and she, I believe in like the 1800s mid late 1800s and she was a huge advocate of both literacy like classical literacy and then also um huge into like nature study so Mm -hmm. learning about nature and the more that you can get your children immersed in nature the better and including all of the different types of you know not not curriculums but all the different sections of learning math science all of it with nature. And so I feel like it naturally lends itself into our lifestyle. It it just lends itself to being a simple way to incorporate education into everything. Very much Uh, so. I, I, we definitely follow some of her methods, but I haven't really gone over the different styles of homeschooling yet. So I was like, oh, that's a perfect opportunity to catch that one. Cause I'm not very versed on her, but know the whole natural um spending time in nature concept that she taught yeah yeah it, it's really kind of revolutionary and I don't know if you follow 1000 hours outside yeah she I think is very inspired by a lot of Charlotte Mason's writing and stuff too and it's just such a great way to encourage your children to to engage their on their own and learn on their own and 
and be curious and just all of those different things that I absolutely love um, and wanting to make sure that our kids are learning about how to grow their own food and how to start a fire and how to safely use a knife and all of those kinds of things. So. Yeah. So sorry, I, I did cut you off a little bit earlier. You were talking a little bit about how you include the kids just working outside and stuff. Yeah. I mean, we, our kids, <clears throat> that's one thing. Our kids do everything with us and that's not always by choice. We live, <laughs> we don't have any family close to us. So my family's about three and a half hours and uh, Marianne's family's about five and a half hours. So we can't be like, oh, hey, grandma, can you watch the kids while we, you know, extract all this honey or we got to spend a whole day moving bees? Like, can you come over? Um, they're just with us all the time. Mm -hmm. And it it slows yeah. things down quite a bit, but it's so worth it. Like just life skills that we get to teach them that I just feel like they're not they're not going to pick up at school. You know, no. our six year old son, like we let him go outside and shoot his BB gun by himself <laughs> because we've taught him. We trust him. He has his own pocket knife. Like he carries around a pocket knife, like not That's very many so six year olds. I, I, maybe, maybe they do, yeah, but I don't what? feel like. When I was a kid, I'd go see my dad for the weekend and he was always working on the ranch. And so he would just set me up like a box with a target on it and be like, sit here and shoot while I do what I need to do. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. Like he has a, a BB gun, he has a bow, he has a slingshot, like he knows he how to use it, like how to be responsible with it. And we haven't hit any windows yet. Um, <laughs> Excellent. But, That's yeah. Or people, thankfully. Yeah. So it, it, you know, just having them around and getting to show them different things. Like what I, I have an old Jeep that breaks down constantly. <laughs> like it's just part of owning a jeep uh, yeah <laughs> so like he is under the jeep with me working all the time like learning how to learning how things work and it's it's just skills that they're learning that that i feel like they're not going to get anywhere else and that's just because they're around us all the time yeah i mean i guess the hope is that all of these things that we're able to instill in them they can then carry on later in life and and ultimately being a student of life, you know, being a lifelong learner, that's something that I always try to have in the back of my mind. And I feel like personally, I'm always learning something new. And I think even as adults, we can continue learning and then teaching things to our children. I just, I love that concept. Right. I, you know, so I was on a podcast last week. I'm not sure when it's going to air, so I'm not going to, um, but it was on, they had me on to talk about raising the self-sufficient teenager. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, it was a concept that I hadn't really thought of. I mean, I thought about it obviously, but so many of the people in kind of our homestead business influencer bubble have younger children. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of them have gone to that teenager mark yet. Right. And <clears throat> sorry for my listeners. I have a cold. Um, and with that, you know, like I even, I was kind of laughing to myself when we were talking about your six-year-old going out with his gun. For me, that was normal life for so many of us. We were proud to say that like, we can trust our young child with a gun. And then I think about where I'm at with my teenagers who now at that point, this is just normal life for them. I'm not like bragging that my 17 year old can go out and shoot by himself. Right. Yeah. But I was on this podcast and I was talking about how when we got home from Homesteaders of America, so actually on our way home, our son uh, rolled his truck. Well, his buddy rolled his truck and he was in the passenger seat, like really oh, scary. Wow. They yeah. weren't drinking or doing anything dumb. They just, they came around a corner. There was a deer there. They ended up rolling into the creek. Everybody was okay. Thank goodness. Um, it's one of those things that just happens. I mean, I'm not brushing it off, but um, <clears throat> they had a bunch of guns on the back of the truck because it's hunting season in North Idaho. Mm, yeah. So they came home to our house because nobody was here and laid everything out on my brand new carpets <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> cleaned these guns. And then made sure they worked by shooting them off the back porch 
And I had to laugh about it because the only thing they were in trouble for with me was they didn't clean up all the shelves off the back porch. And I found them when I got home. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm being interviewed on this podcast and I'm telling them this story and she's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I was like, well, the only issue was that they didn't clean up after themselves because exactly. those are the things that I, I would rather my boys be out, you know, hunting and know how to clean guns and make the smart choice with their guns afterwards. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. just mad they didn't clean up after themselves because <laughs> I, I have self-sufficient teenagers. I don't have, uh, I don't have teenagers that clean up after themselves. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's a real thing. That are there teenagers that clean up after themselves? I don't. I think don't so. think so. No, not unless I mean, they're called. I mean, I'm an adult, and she says I don't clean up after myself. So <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I'm. I only clean up after myself when I have to. So you know. <laughs> I just, I thought that was an interesting <clears throat> piece that all of us are really working on our younger kids. And I know that I've been working really hard on my teenagers, but even in my writings and stuff, I'm not talking about my teenagers. I'm talking about what I'm doing with my younger kids. And mm-hmm. so it's just such a, like, you have a six-year-old, give it a few years. Let's see how you like him shooting out in the yard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. <clears throat> So you guys with your products. So tell us a little bit about your products that you sell because I I love them. They actually they have a special place in my kitchen. And <laughs> I totally treated myself to homemade cornbread with your honey all over it the other night and Ooh, I have yum. pictures and I haven't put it up yet. I was saving it for, you know, later. But <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what you guys have. Yeah, so we have a variety of different things. Um, We have herbal salves, which most of those all kind of have different purposes. Some of them are multi-purpose, but um, they all are just different. They all offer different medicinal. um, What am I trying to say here? (laughs) They all serve a different purpose. Yeah. 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 Um, So the herbs, we actually, we grow them all here on we either oh, a lot grow of them, them not all of them but yeah a lot yeah of them. we either grow them or forage most of them um and then the beeswax is from our bees because mm-hmm. when you're a beekeeper you have an abundance of beeswax yeah so um that that's kind of how we started because we ended up with beeswax more before we actually made a lot of honey because we've yeah. just been working on kind of growing everything um growing our apiary so when you grow you don't necessarily harvest a lot of honey so we actually haven't this was the first year that we've really harvested a significant a significant amount amount, more than just for us and it still in the grand scheme of things wasn't a lot yeah so it was we harvested i think 180 or 90 pounds which isn't that much yeah so So i'm glad i got some of it then yeah yeah hopefully in the future we can I mean, that's our goal for next year is yeah. to produce significantly more honey um, now that our population is up. But yeah, so we sell honey, we sell the salves and lip balm, we have beard balms, we have lotion bars, and then most recently we started making candles, which that's been, that's been a lot of fun. Yeah. So they're kind adorable. of a little bit of everything. Those are what have a special little spot in my kitchen. They're behind like a little glass window on a shelf. Aww. Oh, <laughs> Because they're, they're just so cute. I'll I'll never actually burn them. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of people say that. And I'm like, no, you should, you should, you should. But I understand because personally, I also am like, oh, but this is so cute. Like, I don't, I don't want to burn it. I need but, to order some of your candle sticks. Like, because I think yeah. I feel sad, like burning the cute little owl or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The candle sticks, definitely. We're going to burn some of those probably for Advent and for Christmas time. Yeah. That'll be fun. The owls are my favorite too. They're they're really cute. <laughs> he picked out that one. The mold. For they're those. pretty adorable, and and yeah. and yeah, it would just feel weird like lighting the little owl on fire and watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I actually thought about doing like a nativity candle, and then I was like, this is kind of weird. Like to light baby Jesus on fire <laughs> just seems <laughs> sacrilegious. Yeah. Like I don't know. I don't know yeah, I, do that. I don't know what the rules on that are. You know. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> It just seemed wrong. So I decided not against that one, but Mm -hmm. yeah, a little bit of everything. Um, And we're actually doing, trying to do more like local markets and trying to make more local connections because I think that's really where 
will sell the most things really in the most honey. So yeah. yeah and, that's been, and that's kind of been harder for us just because like I work on the weekends typically. So we can't do a lot of farmers markets. Marion can do it, but she also has the kids on Saturdays, you know. Yeah, by myself. That's hard. Uh, and we're transplants. We're not from here. So it's not we like no people. Yeah. It's not like we know, you know, Jim Bob down the road <laughs> there, you know. So we're starting to, to meet more people and getting I know I mean we've been here for like eight years, which seems like it'd be long enough, but it takes a while, I feel like, to get assimilated into your community and really meet people and mm-hmm. have especially real when you're raising younger kids. Yeah. yeah. And you're homeschooling, so you're not part of, you know, the public school drop-off line and yeah yeah I definitely don't, we don't really have a ton of neighbors like we we do and we know the ones that are relatively close to us but like we don't live in a subdivision yeah so, so how like, do you meet your neighbor that lives four mm-hmm. miles down the road yeah <laughs> right well I meet my neighbors by my dogs won't stay in their fence maybe you should get a dog <laughs> that won't stay in their fence <laughs> That's the thing. We, we, we don't had, suggest that. We had a pig story like that, and that's actually how we met one of our neighbors. So. Yeah, I think we talk about that on our podcast. Yeah, we had a pig that got loose for almost three months and was living under our neighbor's deck. Oh, very. See, I, I always worry about our pigs getting out because we're right on the Canadian border. Oh, oh. it's not like dogs, you can call them back, but pigs, that does not work. No, no I just, I mean, we assume that the coyotes got he it because it was, was only, young. I mean, it was the size of a football like it was a baby piglet oh wow and it disappeared and i thought that i figured the coyotes had gotten it (laughs) and then we get a phone call like three months later hey did weren't you guys missing a pig it's over under alan's deck i was like oh my gosh oh wow and he was like he was significantly bigger yeah tearing up his lawn and we're like oh no he has this beautiful like hot tub and like pool back there and it looks amazing and i'm like i'm so sorry our pig is living under your porch like this is very embarrassing but he was he was a good sport about it and we got to meet him so you know see there you go i i don't know you know pigs are respectful of hot wire because they they touch their nose to it and they don't like Mm -hmm. it but once they get like 800 pounds they don't care anymore yeah. yeah. So if my boys leave the gate open, they just walk right over the hot wire. Like they don't care if they get a little zap from it. And like today I looked out my window and I had a whole herd of like 800 pound sows on the oh, side man. of my hill. And I'm like, boys, do you want to maybe go do something about that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. They're like, well, that one mama always gets out. I'm like, great. There's seven. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't blame it on just one. <laughs> yeah. Because we do have one mom right now that's in like a separate pin that we don't normally put moms in we only put babies because we don't have a way of like closing it and then there's like a concrete drop down so the babies can't get up over that but the moms can so just one of those yeah Yeah. but she only had two pig well she had a whole litter of piglets but she had them out in general pop and some of them froze it was very sad oh that is really hard it was the first litter out of our new boar too so we were really excited and we only got two that survived but you know, it happens. I mean, we have nine sows and we watch them, but sometimes it happens. Yeah. yeah. We're not mm-hmm. doing AI either. So our boar, we only have an idea of when he breeds, not right. like an exact day. So we have to just kind of keep an eye on him. And sometimes it's our teenagers who don't keep an eye on them. So I mean, you don't, you don't look down and see the candles lit in the barn and all the, the romantic <laughs> music playing. <Ooh>. Or <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have pictures the first time we were seeing if he was like tall enough. Like we have pictures of the whole family like peeking over the gate, <laughs> like the baby peeking through the people, like all yeah. seeing if he could like do his job. <laughs> I was That's like, hilarious. so what does your homestead family do on a Friday night? <laughs> yeah. This is our entertainment. Stuff that city folks just wouldn't understand. <laughs> oh yeah, the kids get so excited over the semen catalog and like we don't even ever <laughs> order semen. They just want to like all look at the pictures and <laughs> and they don't think that it's weird. So then we have like uh people come over like we have um like an early intervention therapist that comes and works with Branch cuz at almost 30 he's still not talking. So um they come over to work with him and the other kids come in they're like, "Yeah, the semen catalog came in and you know this lady's like, Ugh. that's too good yeah just 
homestead life. Gotta love it. Yeah. yeah. You never know, especially with kids, what they're going to say yeah. or do. Um, so you guys, I mean, you were telling us about the products and that you're going to work with, um, try to sell more locally, but I feel like you've really built a brand on, I don't know how to like say this exactly. Like I have a lot of people come to me and they go, I want to make salves or I want to sell wool. And like, it's a really, I guess, flooded market. Mm -hmm. And you guys have really made a brand for yourself in that. Like, I mean, I see you everywhere online. I see you at events and that type of thing um, with something that's a fairly flooded market. Like you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, the number one thing in my opinion is being consistent and just constantly engaging, constantly trying to make connections, um, constantly coming up with ideas on how to share things or how to share your product or explain what your product does or is so that you can let your audience know what you're trying to sell. Um, but really telling your story is you kind guys of, have done a beautiful job of that. That to me, I was listening when we first started our business, I was listening to all of these different podcasts about, you know, how to get your business started. And, and I have some marketing experience just because of my design background, um, marketing and design go hand in hand. So I've worked with mm -hmm. a lot of marketing uh, people in marketing and done a lot of, you know, collaborations with people in marketing. So I have a little bit of experience there, but really the podcast I was listening to is talking about that and telling your story. And what do you want people to know about you or your business? What do you want? And, and being authentic too. I mean, that's, <clears throat> I think people can see through if you're not being authentic or not. Um, and so that's really one of our main goals is to be authentic and to be consistent and to be engaging with people. <laughs> and I feel like if you're doing those things, you can only go up. Like, I don't see how you could really fail. Um, yeah. That's just my opinion anyway. Yeah. And I, I love think all your cute little bee videos. <laughs> when you get like the real close-ups of them, like doing stuff, those are my favorites. So yeah, people love those. People love all the bee videos. <clears throat> yeah. And I think too, something that, that we're, we've always been super mindful about is we're not in competition with anyone. Yeah. Like, we are content doing our things. If if people buy stuff off of us, that's cool. But like even on like our Instagram, like we share other small businesses stuff that sell the exact same thing that we or do. Or similar, yeah. Like mm -hmm. we don't we don't care. Like we want people to <clears throat> support small and support other homesteads. And that's not necessarily that you have to buy anything from us. Like I would rather, you know, educate you on why it's important to support a small business than you buy anything from me i mean it's great if you want to buy something by all means <laughs> but that means you can buy more beekeeping equipment and he's always a fan of that so yeah <laughs> well yeah. you guys do a great job of like bringing the other like with the other small businesses on your podcast like the other homesteaders and stuff mm -hmm. yeah we really try to do that i mean that was the the passion behind that was just sharing other people's stories and giving people a platform to kind of explain how they got started and why they do what they do. And yeah, just connecting people. Like I really love, I've always liked communicating and connecting people and making, you know, helping build relationships and helping people to understand one another. And so that, that has really been a passion of both yeah. of ours. I mean, I think we both really enjoy doing that and engaging people. Well, yeah, and that 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 whole like the whole podcast and everything that came out of our first year at Homesteaders of America. So we had had the farm or the homestead farm, whatever you want to call it. We were doing animals. We were doing all this stuff here, doing you know gardening and livestock. So we'd been doing that for a while, but then like, you know, we had heard of some of the bigger names like Justin Rhodes and, and things like that. And we're like, huh, you know, people are recording themselves doing that. So like, let's do that. So <laughs> that's how the Instagram started. So fast forward like five months, we had heard about Homesteaders of America. 
and we really wanted to go. And it was one of the first times that we had been somewhere without our kids for probably a, a year time. or two. Like we got the whole weekend to ourselves. It was awesome. Oh, nice. That's what we yeah. did last year at Homesteaders. Yeah. We left all the kids. Yeah. So we were driving home and usually our best conversations happen in the car on trips for some We've reason. We've always had good road trips. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like road trips are our thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So like we were having this conversation we we're like, you know, we see all these people, uh, all these quote unquote famous homestead people. And, and not that there's anything wrong with this, but not a lot of them started from scratch. Not a lot of them uh, didn't have any experience whatsoever. So we were like, we want to hear about other homesteaders like that are in that situation, you know, the not someone who like inherited <laughs> 200 acres and it is making it work or, you know, like us, we can't, we can't afford a tractor. So we use a lawnmower to pull everything around the farm. <laughs> like, you know, those are the kind of people we want to talk to because we feel like that's the kind of people that a lot of people can relate to. Yeah. So that was where the the kind of the podcast and the whole Instagram thing started. And, you know, none of our pictures on our Instagram, I don't think you use any kind of filters or anything crazy. Like they're not doctored, they're not Photoshopped. Like it's just, it's our farm. Sometimes you see junk in the background and <laughs> sometimes you see a dirty floor or something like that, but it, it is what it is. You know, I just had a photographer come up to the farm to take pictures of the family and stuff for the website and for a few things. And yeah, like we didn't even, I thought like, well, I won't even clean the trash up because she's going to be doing like headshots and that type of stuff. <clears throat> and she took all these pictures that have our trash in the background and they looked amazing. I'm like, you're an artist. How did you make it look like we should have that trash? <laughs> yeah. Everyone but has their junk piles. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's stuff like on our chicken coop, there used to be like a tarp up and the tarp is like all shredded now. And it was in the background of the picture and it doesn't even look like it wasn't supposed to be there. So, yeah. Yeah. We have a pile of ladders on the side of our building. I mean, yeah, you just, we just have. You never know when you're going to need that junk. It's like, true. It right. comes in handy. So, organized junk. I, I, yeah. I'm big on the organized junk. You know, sometimes my family likes to leave all the junk just out. So, <laughs> yeah. We're, we like organized junk. Yeah, we're yeah. in the process of organizing it a little bit better because eventually we want to have a commercial kitchen on our property. So Ooh, nice. as much as I don't want any government involvement in my life, <laughs> uh, they have to come out and do like septic inspections and all those kind of stuff. So we're trying to make it a little bit more looking a little better i suppose it doesn't look but... bad it's never looked bad i think we're no. just trying to minimize our mess yeah i guess you could say that yeah but make those junk piles straight and <laughs> clean <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i love how what you're saying about your podcast because it's like this realm can some you know it's it's turning into such a commercialized industry which you know good and bad and whatever i mean we're making some of our income off of it so we can't right eat it too much yeah there's a there's a place for it and <clears throat> and informing people who would never otherwise find out about homesteading i think that those people reach out to the masses yeah so i i just i love what you guys are doing like bringing people together a little bit more where somebody else has a place to be able to be like oh me me you know like i think a lot of these places you're you're like, man, I wish, you know, they, they're a really big name. Like, I wish they would notice some of the rest of us, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I really like that you guys are doing that, like bringing people on as they're getting going and being scrappy. Yeah, yeah we had, and this, I don't know if I should share this. You can do with it what you will. Um, <laughs> but we had shared someone's products on our Instagram. And this was a while ago. And it was a product that we had bought. We had enjoyed it. We, we shared it and we got a, a private message from this person and they were like, thank you. Like I was talking to another person on Instagram who was like another homesteader. Yeah. Person. Instagram famous, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, but I had asked her if she would maybe, cause I was starting out, would you be willing to talk about this? And she was like, Oh yeah. For a thousand dollars. 
and that just burnt me to my core. I'm like, really? Like I, I, you know, I mean, you could just say, oh, that doesn't really fit what I want to share with my people or something nice. I don't know. Not that that's mean, but it's, but we should be lifting each other up. We should be trying to help each other out. Like that's, that's yeah. I mean, I get, you know, there's like that little bit of like a marketing window, but that's why, like, for example, I put together my affiliate program is people want to share it, but let me, if I can get more people to share it, they get something out of it, you know? And right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, there's but, nothing wrong with networking and being a business person. I mean, that's absolutely understandable. Like that's, as you said, it's, we're all trying to make a living off of what we're doing. So mm-hmm. it's not, I don't fault anybody for that. You know, that's, I guess it's just being reasonable and having the willingness to, like you yeah, said, to see, a brand to new see one the can't person. Afford $1, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seeing somebody exactly. who's starting off that, <clears throat> that has has the passion and wants to wants to do all of this like yeah help them out like i want i would want people to help me out i would want you know people to help help others out i just i don't mm-hmm. understand yeah. it doesn't hurt anything so no um, it doesn't I, I like that concept like i kind of i have my I have a Facebook group for the Homestead Education podcast. So, you know, everybody go join. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I put on there every week and I, I wish I, w- I could get a little bit more involvement, but, you know, we're learning. But, you know, I'm like, hey, here's my podcast for the week. Everybody else share yours, you know? Yeah. Because I don't, th- that, my vision for the Homestead Education is for everybody to kind of teach. Yeah. And there's more to that coming in the future, hopefully, but that's where I really want to make some of my networking is by giving a platform for more people. So, you know, you guys get over there, like share your podcasts every week. Yeah, we will. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. for sure. I'll definitely do that. Because I really, yeah, this network of people is really, and it's a great group of people. I've been so happy with everybody that I've met, you know? Mm. Yeah. I just see it as a bigger community. Like I, I just see it as instead of my actual neighbors, you're my neighbor and, Mm -hmm. whatever state you're in, you know, like I just see it as you're my new friend and you're, you know, I don't, I don't see it as like, Oh, you have a podcast too. Oh no. I need to hide and make sure nobody knows about that. Like, you know, I'll I'll be really honest. Like I'm putting together like a little gift giving email thing, you know, like all the typical marketing stuff you have to do. And I have on there like you guys. And it was like, these are good friends of mine. And they um you know you know that when you're buying from them you're buying from people and not a corporation you know Mm. and i don't have an affiliate with you guys or anything like that i just wanted to be able to send some business your way we appreciate if anybody even reads those emails who knows (laughs) (laughs) that's the risk we all take sometimes you are just talking out into the void it's been that i mean that is a reality too that people don't necessarily like talking about like there's been plenty of times where i've you know, said something or asked people to do this or like that, tried to do a giveaway or whatever. And it just flopped. Like mm-hmm. sometimes that just happens or you, yeah. Or no one responds to what you're, you're asking, you know, a question and no one says anything and you're like, okay, never mind, That didn't work. So you just you know, kind of learn and roll with it as you go. You know, my business coach, she always says like, make sure you remind them to like and share. And I'm like, man, if they wanted to, they would, you know, <laughs> Um, but that's a really good point. Like if we were going to put this out here for everybody that's listening, some of those of you who are wanting to get something off the ground, like things, share, comment, ask us questions, respond, because you're helping us. And in return, we're going to remember your name. If you try to want to join our community too, like our, our community that we're creating for ourselves that we want you to join, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. That's so, so true. I mean, I, and I don't want to sound, I'm not trying to be arrogant by any means, but like <laughs> we, we get a lot of, I really, you come on, off as an arrogant guy, you know, <laughs> I know I'm, I'm kind of a jerk, but, no. <laughs> but like, so we, we do get a lot of followers on Instagram, like the way Instagram works. We do get a lot of followers. We get a lot of unfollowers every day too. Mm-hmm. Like it's a give and take, but like, we don't always 
like you pull up Instagram once and you might see a list of 25 people that, that followed you and then, Oh shoot, my kid's doing something. You put your phone down. Well, that list is gone when you pull your phone back up. So you don't Mm -hmm. see everyone, but if someone follows and then comments and says something really nice or engages or whatever, then I'm more likely to be like, Oh, who is that? Oh man, they do some really, really cool stuff. You know what I mean? Like, and and it's not that we're ignoring anyone that follows us. It's just, we don't always see it. Like Mm -hmm. it's really hard, especially too, because both of us use (laughs) the Instagram account. So (laughs) if she looks at something and then like he doesn't five minutes later, I'm at work and I'm like, Oh, I got a free minute. I pull it up. There's you miss I all miss your everything. beekeeping people because yeah. I saw all the videos. Sorry, man. All my beekeeping <laughs> content. So. You, you know what? Our Facebook ranch page, I Ron and I share it. And I finally I had to just be like, you go ahead and check the messages. And if you feel like so- something I need to take over, like if it's too much of a business type mm-hmm. transaction, let me know. But if it's just someone asking what we have available or something, you go ahead and handle that. And it's one thing off my plate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then we aren't missing messages because we'd both see it. And I'd be like, oh, he already saw it. So he's handling that. Yeah. And that's oh, yeah, not always that's the true. case. <laughs> yeah. Once we figured out how to to do the unread market messages, is unread, yeah. Market oh. is unread, at least on Instagram. So uh-huh. like we can do it on Facebook too. Like if I read yeah, something, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's probably something for Marianne, then I mark it as unread. So then she sees it later. Yeah, I do the same. But you thing. can't do that with notifications. No, but you can with messages. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, I think that's going to be really help. All of this is going to be really helpful to the listeners because I have a lot of people that follow me that are trying to continue this like homestead homeschool path and like moms that are trying to stay home and right. I mean, this, trying to figure out how to have a voice in this really loud arena, mm-hmm. but be able to like still work from home and stuff. It, it's, it's challenging hmm it is yeah. definitely challenging I mean that's we were just talking about that before we started talking to you <laughs> just how there's so many things happening all at the same time and sometimes that alone is exhausting not even the things that you're doing it's just the fact that you mm-hmm. have 25 little small things that you have to do and make sure that you remember and yeah, it's just, it's a lot on your brain. Like it's a, a huge mental toll. I think most moms can relate to that, especially. Yeah. You just have, you just have all of those little things that you're focusing on. And, and sometimes that brain power is just like, oh, my brain is about to melt. I can't do this. Right. So it is challenging. Even working from home, as you know, it's, it's a challenge to try to juggle it all. Yeah. And then, you know, you're, you- You know, from a marketing standpoint, you're trying to be like, okay, what's everybody else doing? What's working for everyone else? And then all of a sudden you're trying to do everything. And it's like, wait, 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 I can't do everything. Yeah. Especially the ones like some of the bigger names who, you know, have like production companies with them and stuff. Like there's no way. They have a team. Yeah. They have a team. Like, yeah. You know, my team is honey, have you shipped that yet? Honey, have you shipped my boxes yet? Okay, fine. I'll just do it by myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're the team. Yeah. That's it. This, this is it. <laughs> well, we say team, but Marion, like she, she is a machine when it comes to this stuff, because like, I, I do what I can and I do the stuff outside and, you know, I, I work do with the lot. bees yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But like, I also work, work 40, 50, sometimes 60 Ooh, hours yeah. a week. Like, so there's and, only so much you can do at home. Yeah. yeah. And we couldn't, if I didn't work that much, like we, we couldn't do what we're doing now. Yeah. And eventually we would like to, I would like to not have to, to go work, to a job, <laughs> but for, for now, that's what we have to do. So, and I mean, honestly, we, as far as job goes and working off the farm, This might be a little bit off topic, but like we were so looking back, like we are, are really blessed just by that. So when our oldest son, when he was six months old, like I had to call Marianne, Hey, I just got let go from work, like laid off. Downsizing. Yeah. Like I need you to come pick me up because I drove a company vehicle. So she had to come pick me up in the morning because you know so six month old kid we were 
basically kind of living paycheck to paycheck. Well, less than that, because I only worked part time. So. Yeah. And no job. And it was like, oh, crap. So <laughs> my the job that I'm at now, I've been here six and a half years. Five. Five and a half years. <laughs> this will be six in yeah, coming up on six years. Um, and like I've I didn't really like it, but you know, I just worked and worked and worked. And um in those six years, I've tripled my salary. Like oh wow. Yeah, like and <clears throat> like I can say, like it didn't always feel like it was a blessing. But but God's really taken care of us in that amount of time. And it's it's really let us be able to do the things that yeah. that we are doing now. Um that's great. I yeah. You know, so, and no, it's not off topic because we talk a lot about all the different streams of income that you need to have to have a yeah to make a home, you know. Yeah. Right. And it's mm-hmm. I mean, I listening to radical homemakers or some of the other like passive income type people. I mean, you need like a regular income, you need a entrepreneurial income, you need a non-monetary income and like a long-term or like passive income type thing. So, Mm -hmm. you know, for all those people that work off the farm and think that that's not part of this bigger picture, it really is. You know, Absolutely. Ron and I, Ron and I are lucky enough that like our full-time income is his uh, disability from mm-hmm. um, being a veteran. Like he was mm-hmm. blown up three times in Iraq. So he earned our base income. <laughs> yeah. I would say yes. that's definitely accurate. Definitely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know, I'm lucky that I get to have him home, but you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, your wife makes enough for you to be able to be home. And he's like, no, I make enough for she, she was able to be home. And then mm-hmm. she yeah. chose to start these businesses because she can't hold still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course, now that I have three businesses going, we definitely rely on those incomes at this point. But yeah. yeah. And I mean, even as like the income has been great, like moving up, but even here recently within the last four months, I think it was like, I got a, another promotion at work. So congratulations. Like was, oh, thank you. Like I was, you know, driving around in a work van, out in the field, um, out in the field climbing telephone poles, Ooh. like carrying ladders all day long, like in server closets, working on a laptop, like doing all this crazy stuff, never knowing when I was really going to get home because, you know, you work until the job's done. Mm-hmm. But now I'm in an office like I got a bathroom it's awesome Ooh. so <laughs> the luxury of having but, your own bed. you know it was even I, I talk about the different where... funny things that we get to flex on and you get to flex on a bathroom so I know right <laughs> yeah it's not nice and it's not really always clean but it's a bathroom you know but uh but like even even doing all that like kind of manualish labor like I was just getting wore out like doing all that throughout the week and then coming home and having to do everything on the on the farm and it was just it was getting too much. Mm-hmm. That's hard. So so now like I I my job is not physically demanding at all. Uh, it's very mentally demanding, but I can handle that. Like I can you handle have fortified that. mind. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's really been a blessing and I feel like whatever God's plan is for us, I feel like it's, it's in the process, you know? Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, it all, the way I see it, it's, it's all helping us to try to achieve our goals. Like you said, it's, I think sometimes it's really easy to think we're all just going to quit our jobs and stay home and make YouTube videos of us milking our goats. And like, that's awesome. (laughs) If you can do that. I really appreciate people who are able to do that more power to you, but it's also not that practical if you have bills to pay. (laughs) Yeah. And I was, I was watching, um, Ron watching a, I don't know, some history channel show the other day. And I was like, what is the draw? And like, it wasn't that I was asking like, Ooh, what's the draw? It was, I was literally asking, what is the draw that's because I see so many uh, people in our homestead back like world really making it on making these YouTube videos of them milking a goat. And I'm like, I I don't have that. Like, yeah, Mm -hmm. I I don't have that. Like personally, I don't think I have the draw to get people to listen to me every week 
watching me milk a goat, but I'm getting people to listen to me on my podcast. But yeah, so I don't know. (laughs) I mean, I think that's another valid point too, though, is like, find what your strengths are. I mean, you were talking about like marketing and stuff. I knew that I knew how to do really good design and really good marketing. I knew that about myself. I knew, you know, the skills that we already had. So instead of trying to like, squeeze yourself into all these things that already exist Mm -hmm. think about your own strengths your own passions the things that you really want to do that you are equipped to do and do that you know instead of trying to become something else like it because you'll be more successful if you're passionate about it and if you have some skills going into it I mean we all learn things as we go but Right. Being able well, to offer something. And that's that's what you do. I mean, that's your background with, you know, starting your curriculum and all of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I knew I wasn't the have somebody follow me around doing my farm chores, mm-hmm. but I found something that did work for me. So I, I think that's a really valid point. But it is, it's the story, too. And that's yeah, trying to figure that piece out is because people that personal connection is it's it's big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, it is important. I think people just want to see that you're a real person, you know, like, I want to see that when I'm talking and connecting with other people, I want to see that they have struggles or that they not everything is perfect or that they have that they're working really hard or that, you know, whatever it is that it's an authentic human Mm -hmm. quality that we can actually relate to. I think that's really important. Yeah. And I don't I don't want to let you in on a little secret. Well, I'm going to let you in a little secret, <laughs> but like we actually watch a little TV occasionally. Oh, like no. <laughs> like we do indulge in some TV, but right now we've been watching <laughs> the middle. Like, and I've never. I don't think we have ever watched it before. No, it's an older show. I mean, yeah, it's not like new at all. But we we love it because <laughs> if you watch it, like. It just looks like real life. Like their 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 furniture doesn't match, yeah. and their washer and dryer. They have different colored washer and dryer, and like it just. And they have stuff on their coffee table and a blanket that somebody crochet. Like it's just yeah, it's it's just real. She doesn't cook, so she stores her blankets in the oven. Like which is really <laughs> dumb, but like <laughs> I could see where someone would do that. Like, but anyway, like that that's we watch it most it's probably on for more for background noise but we notice those little nuances more than what the even shows about it's just like oh this is this is normal like stuff normal stuff <laughs> or it makes you laugh because like he was talking about the the dad on the show is talking about like i just i'm i don't communicate i don't talk i don't care about what other people think about me i'm dead inside and i'm okay with that <laughs> and- <laughs> she looked right at me in the eyes <laughs> she knew because and you smiled because you knew and I was like this is so this is exactly I mean he does care a little bit but like Greg is he's he doesn't care he's just himself and like he doesn't he's not trying to impress anybody like he is who he is and you know I would be lying if I didn't say that I didn't care about what people think like I've always been more conscious of that I think I think that's a woman thing yeah I think it definitely can be yeah and so it was just funny that we're like, this is so relatable. Like, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we were talking about being authentic and that's what made me think of that. Like, it's just being, being real. Well, you know what? I'm looking at the time we've been on here about an hour. So that actually is a perfect time for my next big question. Oh, good. What does keep growing mean to you? Hmm. Do you want two separate answers or do yeah. we need to like, collaborate? That's- okay. No, you, we can have, because I, my big thing, I tell everybody to keep growing because I forgot to keep growing at one point and that's how I turned the corner in my life. So I tell everybody, you know, like I'm here to teach you and your kids how to grow your own food and grow as a person. So I love that. Mm-hmm. I really love that. Yeah. I think for us or for me personally, I feel like growing, growing for us means um, continuing to chase our dreams. Um, and just putting one foot in front of the next and pursuing that wholeheartedly. I think, you know, it's easy to not think about all the little milestones and the little goals, but 
that's really important and and slowly growing you know we of course we think about growing and in the spring you have seeds and they pop through the soil and it's this big momentous amazing thing you don't see all the work underneath the soil you don't see the slight cracking of the shell the water absorption oh now it's slightly opening and forming that little sprout and then it pops up to the surface and and all the work behind the scenes and all the the extra hours and extra time um what for a me, analogy like sorry keep going but that's like no that's okay I love it I I just I feel like all of those little things add up and I want to keep doing all of those little things so that one one day this can be our full-time job and it can be the dream that we have and that may take 10 years I have no idea <laughs> um but can I yeah. just say for my viewers because they can't see you guys but when you said like so that this can be our full-time job you like looked at him and smiled and it was just it was beautiful I had I just I wanted to share Aww. that because nobody <laughs> sees my videos but that was really special <laughs> we like each other sometimes yeah <laughs> <laughs> 100% honestly, we just had a big fight right before the no, podcast it wasn't a big started. Fight. It was an argument, but yeah. <laughs> oh, we did. you know what? My husband and I spend 24-7 together because he is home all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so I totally get it. He's my best yeah. friend. He drives me crazy. So Yeah, yeah. exactly. A fight was, yeah, a fight was a bit. We had a, a disagreement because I've been stressed with some stuff and then it just came to a head five minutes before we got on here fine. But, we talked it out. you know what then maybe you needed to hear how beautifully she looked at you so uh, yeah oh i do love you i love you too oh <laughs> it's your turn uh how do keep, you want to keep, keep growing? growing um i think for me keep growing just kind of means keep pushing forward you know we we do the the online stuff the social media stuff and to be honest with you i really enjoy it but if that left tomorrow, really? it is what it is. Yeah. You know, um, I have goals and dreams. Like I want to, you know, take care of my family. Like I want to be at home with my kids. That's kind of why we're trying to start the the bee business and and help that grow. And I really like it. Like if if I could just stay home, like work the bees with my kids and make enough money to make ends meet, like. I'm 100% okay with that. Um, but it's a process, right? So you you just kind of have to take one step at a time and keep your eye on what's what your goals are, what your future is, mm -hmm. and realize that that could radically change like in an instant, but you just kind of got to keep going. And yeah, that's... That's, he that's wants as to good build a beekeeping empire is what he always says yeah. i don't know what that means but hey i love it i i love that thinking bigger than what you're doing so yeah <laughs> she always asks me what i'm doing i'm like i'm thinking about my beekeeping empire babe it's true and he is <laughs> <laughs> oh i love it okay your keep growing is a beekeeping empire <laughs> yep all right well thank you guys so much for coming on and i can't wait to see you again in the future yeah, yeah thank thanks you so for much having we look forward to having you on the Good podcast time. well thank you for joining me today at the homestead education and i hope that i have given you something to think about this week to help others find me please comment and leave a review on your favorite podcast player you can also follow me on facebook and instagram at homemade revelation do you have questions that you'd like answered or just want to say hi please email me at hello at the homesteadeducation.com. Until next time, keep growing.